Is Tio right? Well, yes, and you don't, to steal a line from old LeVar Burton on Reading Rainbow, you, you don't have to take my word for it. Take Jerry Jones's word for it. If Jerry, if, if, if any public service announcement, if any of our or your employers are ever asked about your status moving forward, and they're like, well, it'll be working somewhere next year, you are screwed. <laughs> right. it, is a, it is a wrap for you, B. And so the, the, the idea that the Cowboys are not moving on from Jason Garrett, I think we can now set it aside. And Amani, the reason they have to, even if, you want to, not you, but the generic use, people want to argue, actually, Jason Garrett's a good coach, is because the players are not going to change next year. They're going to bring Dak back. I believe they're going to bring Amari back. Every other frontline player is signed multiple years. So if you're not going to be able to change the personnel, you're, you're, there's what is the other fundamental shift you can make they've already changed out offensive coaching staff they a few years ago changed out defensive coaching staff like there's there's only one card left to play it's not going to be a rebuild it's going to try to be a regrouping to where they were a couple years ago and it's going to be through firing the head coach well, I think you got to understand why Jerry Jones stuck with Jason Garrett for so long as it is. It's a personality thing. You know, he won. Uh, they won three Super Bowls in four years, but they didn't. He didn't like the fact that um, he didn't like the way the coach took most of the credit for the victory. So this is an opportunity. This is a situation where he's there. Jason Garrett is there because of the fact that he gets along well with Jerry Jones. He knows how to make Jerry Jones feel comfortable. He doesn't overstep his bounds. And that's why he's been there for so long. Because, you know, I like Jerry Garrett. I think Jason Garrett, I played with Jason Garrett with the Giants. Uh, I, I credit him for helping me, you know, in my, to have one of my better seasons. So I, I wouldn't say that the, the, the problem in, J, in, in Dallas, I wouldn't say it's Jason Garrett. I think it's easy to say it's Jason Garrett. But this team is just not very good. I think they have a lot of players that are good players. I don't think they have a lot of great players. I think there are players that, um, you know, that, that check the box in the NFC East. But when you go outside the NFC East and you play against the rest of the league, they just don't match up. And you can put as much, you can try to make them as good as, as, as you want them to be. But I just don't think this team, as, I think they are where they are because you are where your so talent you leaves you. So you don't think they're underachieving given their talent level? I don't, because we will look at where they, the teams that they win or they beat this year are all teams that are, you know, 500 or below or teams in the NFC East. Is that because they're underachieving because their coach isn't pushing them the right way? Or is that because these guys are just not good enough? Because when I look at Amari Cooper, I see one of the top five, six receivers in the game. When I see the progression of Dak, I'm seeing a quarterback that has gotten much better, top five quarterback in the league, and a defense that has been underwhelming these last few Zeke. weeks. And, and well, Zeke, of course, he's a top five running sure. back as well. And you paid your offensive line a bunch of money. So they certainly have some talent, I think. I think they've underachieved. There's two questions you got to ask yourself. Who would want to coach for a team where their owner comes out in week 12, week 13, and says these types of things? Who would want to coach for that? Because now we're still in the playoff hunt. In fact, we're leading the NFC East for opportunity to make it into the playoffs. Who would want to coach there? And the other one would be, what would be the answer? What would be the one thing that would make Jason Garrett stay there, right? The playoffs, making the playoffs, of course, and winning the Super Bowl. Of course, he has to come back after that. Is this team ready to play, make a playoffs? Potentially. Are they ready to win a Super Bowl right now? Absolutely not, especially the way that they've played lately. They can't do either one of those things. And so I, I, I think the answer for Jason Garrett is that he probably won't be here next year. I think Jason Garrett is the scapegoat. He's the, easy, the easiest person to fire is the head coach, you know, or, or the quarterback, right? They like Dak. They think Dak is on an upward trend. But I just think that you look at this team and you talk about all their talent. Amari Cooper, he's a great player. Is he, is he top five? I, I don't know if he's top five. You've got to remember, when he, was at, uh, when he was with the Raiders, he was a shadow of himself for years, yeah, bad right? Bad quarterback. So he comes back, he comes back to, you know, to Dallas. He plays a lot better. And all of a sudden, people think he is where he was his rookie year. I think he's a great – I think he's a good player. I wouldn't put him up – I wouldn't put him in the top five in the league. I think there's other I'm, – I'm not – no slight against him. But being in the top five, you can't just have one good season. You have to have a couple good seasons stacked upon each other to prove that that's how you are, not to fluke. So and I don't want to take anything away from Amari Cooper, but – I would let him develop into the player that he could be instead of just giving him this title of top five. I think the Dallas Cowboys shed that light on people and give them and elevate them higher than they really are. Here's the problem, though, for Jason Garrett. Even if you're correct, 
that Jerry and his son Steven clearly believe this team's more talented than you do. Yes. Because they have paid them as such. The Cowboys, the reason the Cowboys can't deal with injuries, I don't think that's coaching, by the way. I think that is the way they've built their team. When you have as many frontline, high paid players, the reason the Patriots uh, every year, they, it's, the way they build their roster is they have a bigger middle class than any team in football. They have a ton of like four to seven million dollar a year guys because aside from Gilmore and Brady, nobody's making above 15 million bucks. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys done the opposite. You got the highest paid offensive line in football. You gave Zeke his money. The, we, 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 you gave Demarcus Lawrence his yep. money. You gave Jalen and Smith his money and we're talking about them even doubling down even further on that strategy with a contract for Dak or Amari or Byron Jones or at least two of those three and so the guys who've picked the players are the people who are going to decide on the head coach and they don't want to blame themselves mm -hmm. they don't want to say we made bad decisions mm -hmm. and even if they did make bad decisions there's no way out of those yeah. most of those contracts they're going to be there the next couple years I think, despite what you guys are saying, though, about the meddling Jason or Jerry Jones does with the head coach, I think this is a great job. Not only because of the talent of the roster, but yeah, Jerry Jones this year, he has come out and had some very critical in this last comment. It's just a death blow, Jason Garrett. But Belichick, Harbaugh, Tomlin, Sean Payton, Pete Carroll, the only five coaches in the league who have had their job longer than Jason Garrett's had his. You can't say that Jerry Jones has not been patient with Jason Garrett. And if I'm a head coach, if I'm on the market, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to be at the highest profile teams. For some t guys, that's not their personality. Some guys would love it. Mm -hmm. They're going to, there's no salary cap on coaches. They got bottomless pockets in Dallas. And I have this talent on my roster. And the co at least this decade, but, they've been very patient yeah. with their head coach. To me, it's a great job. You don't have final say in that locker. Yeah. You never have final yeah. say. When you walk in there, you're not the man. The man is the guy that's standing behind you. And a lot of coaches want to be able to have that authority in a locker room that you can motivate a team. And it doesn't have to be my word. But wait, Jerry Jones will be behind me in five minutes. It's really his word. Yeah. That's what you agree to when you sign on to coach the Dallas Cowboys. Am I right? Y you, you are. But I just never bought into the thing that where a head coach can make me play any better. Like, I never played in the NFL for a head coach. I played for my teammates, and I played for myself. Um, and also, going to Nick's point, when you talk about the way that they built this team, I think you're absolutely right. It's, I think it's the Sean Lee situation, right? Like, remember when Sean Lee was their defensive stopper in the yeah. middle? And when he was out, they were their screwed. team was terrible. Now they got Van Der Esch. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Like, Sean Lee's older. Van Der Esch is their guy that they feel like can stop, you know, that can create a lot of tackles and do all that stuff. So I think that you're right in that sense in that it's not really about – I think that they're not very judicious with who they give their money to, and they don't spread it out evenly. They high-end, and then they have a whole bunch of uh, under – under, you know, yeah, guys that probably shouldn't even be in the league on the That's team. the owner making those decisions, and that's why you have to be worried if you're the coach because now he's just going to play the top-end guys, and those middle guys that you speak of, they won't be you, on the football they team. They built this team the way the best European soccer and basketball and NBA teams are built. The, 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 you, let's worry about the very top of the roster. The rest will figure itself out. It does not work typically in a sport as violent as football. Mm -hmm. When injuries are such a big part of your sport, having your team built that way, it looks good preseason every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once the actual real games start being played, it's a very difficult way to win. They need right. to be like the like the Saints, you know, getting um, Bridgewater. Yes. You know, that's the kind of decision that teams who are going to be successful can withstand a big hit at quarterback like Drew Brees. Yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons why Cowboys are there. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.